Good evening and welcome to Midnight Movie Club and another Midsummer video. In tonight's video we will just be having a wee chat about some more fantastic marketing at play from A24. You may well have caught this already if you are following A24 or myself over on Twitter, but I thought why not, we should just take a little look into it anyway and see if we get any ideas of what's in store for us in the film. The other night A24 tweeted out the festival of a lifetime is coming this summer, get your tickets for Midsummer now. Along with this tweet we got a mock of your typical summer festival poster but this poster is giving us a little tease of what's to come within the film. Once again quickly just hats off to A24 for some more amazing marketing, this is just such a cool way to do it. So on the poster we see Ari Aster presents Midsummer at the top with the years below of every year the Midsummer festival has run. We know it's every 90 years and we see the year when it all first began, 1389, all the way through to 2019. We also see the province of Housingland, which is a historic province in central Sweden and where the Midsummer Festival will take place. We also get another confirmation of this as we can read Vernitsia, which is Swedish for every 90 years. Sorry if my pronunciation was off. Now let's get into the juicy bit of this poster in Wednesday July 3rd. We can see the third holds the Midnight Suns, possibly some ritual of some sort. It also says the Brothers. Sure we are looking at brothers, we also see Siv and Igamar, probably two important cult leaders or something like that. Then we get a hint at some of the themes within Midsummer and the relationship aspect of it with codependent relationships. We will see if every relationship is a codependent one or maybe just Christian and Danny's. I mean there must be some reason he hasn't broken up with her yet if he has been unhappy now for a while. We get fifth wheel and I feel that this probably will be Will Porter's character as he seems kind of pissed that people around him are all in relationships. From the trailers I get that vibe anyway. Then we get so many white people, I'm guessing this is just a whole creepy pagan cult of all the villagers. After that it reads a tribe called Harga, I am sure Harga is one of the female cult members so she must have a little following that is her tribe. That's followed by DJ Absolutely Not, I guess there won't be much music at this festival then unless it's in a more traditional sense. Then rivalries in academia, I'm just guessing that this is just friends having problem within the group. Keyhole peoples, I have no idea, maybe people watching you through keyholes, then we get runes. We have seen a bloody rune quite a lot with bloody hands praying at it, so maybe this is in reference to that. Finishing off this day then, we get sexy murals, the finishing mallet possibly the mallet we have seen the man holding in the trailers and why can't everyone just acclimate? We hear Christian and Danny talking about acclimating in the trailer, he says they have to, she says she doesn't want to, I wonder what they are acclimating to. Moving on to Thursday we get pretty wild off the bat. Thursday's headline act is Skin the Fool. That one really speaks for itself and whoever the fool is, I feel for them. But now I'm starting to understand how messed up this film will be just like everyone who's read the script has said. That's followed by Marbles X Contraptions, I'm guessing it's something to do with one of those festival games that they're going to be playing or maybe that lottery like pinball machine we've seen in one of the trailers. As I said in one of my trailer breakdowns I said that I believe that that machine will spit out random numbers and each contestant will have a number, then whosever number is pulled out they'll have to do something fucked up. Then that is followed by clap your hands and say ho ha, which is probably some sort of chant you know for the cult. Then we get shitty boyfriend, probably Christian, also see caged bear. We have seen a bear being dissected during the trailers, probably the same poor bear. Then we get Anfro Bros, your girlfriend needs a therapist and flowers. We have heard the line she needs a therapist from Will Poulter's character in the trailers and I'm sure there will be plenty and plenty of flowers everywhere. 
So moving on, on to the next line, we have mystery shots. Maybe they have to drink something, possibly the drug that makes them easier to go along with everything, you know, more compliant. Then ethno-tourism, that is basically where travellers take part in visiting primitive cultures and experiencing them instead of going to fancy hotels, so pretty much what they're doing in the film. Although they probably get a bit too much ethno-tourism than they bargain for. Then we get Dancing with Strangers, even more flowers, MC Special Properties, has any anyone seen Simon and Pig's Head? It does not sound great for Simon or that pig to be honest. Moving on to Friday now, the last day, we kick off with Ruben the Painter. This could be one of the cult members, maybe the one that paints all of the walls with the ritualistic imagery. Next we see everything gets reborn. Is this meaning people or the land they are on? This is what leads me to think they do this festival to keep the ground going and fertile or to keep the cult alive. Maybe they are reborn younger and can live forever as long as they do this every 90 years. Then we get Danny and the Maple. I still personally feel like Danny is the key to the cult getting exactly what they want from the festival. We can also read Plump Elder off-white everything, red-headed girl, who I believe is the girl that has the hots for Christian. Then we get sleepover in log house, 72nd birthdays, Scal, who I believe is a member of the cult. Then, fear of the ticks. Fear of ticks gets me a little worried as I'm sure we're going to get a pretty messed up scene involving a character and a tick, so look forward to that one. We also get DJ Buttermilk Cow, Snot and Spittle, lovely, then Off Limits Temple. I feel this is the big yellow triangular building we have seen in the trailers, it just it looks like a temple, something like that. Then finally, hashtag thanks Pell. Maybe Pell is the one that runs and keeps Midsummer going. Maybe that's the woman we see arrive in the fancy carriage in the trailers. So take what you want from all that, I've tried to connect some stuff we know with what's on the poster, let me know if there's anything you have noticed or connected for yourself that I have not covered. All in all, once again just fantastic marketing from A24 and just under a month now until midsummer. I cannot wait. So let's get discussing it a little bit more in the comment section down below, I will see you down there and if you enjoyed this video give it a like and if you haven't already then what are you doing, subscribe to join the club. As always, thank you very much for watching and good night.